All right, thank you again to those of you joining us this evening. We're gonna give folks about one more minute to join the webinar and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks again for being here. All right, well, as we all join our workshop this evening, we can go ahead and jump right in. So moving on to the next slide, um, welcome everyone officially to AC Transit's virtual community workshop with education and information on the redistricting process. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening. Before we really dive into the workshop, I wanna go over a quick administrative introduction to make sure that everyone is situated and ready to participate. First, I want to note that this meeting is being recorded. It will be saved as a resource and posted to the AC Transit redistricting website. So you can go back and reference it later or others can find it online and watch it if they were unable to join us this evening. On the next slide, I'll share that we do have language rooms available this evening and interpretations are being provided in Spanish, Mandarin and Cantonese. At this time, I will ask everyone on the webinar to go ahead and select the English room um, by going to the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and selecting English from the drop down menu there. And after we've shared instructions for entering the different rooms, um, what you'll do is make sure you click on the globe icon and select the language of your choice to enter either the language room for English or Spanish, Mandarin, or Cantonese. So at this time, I'd like to ask interpreters from each of the rooms to share that information in the respective languages before we have folks head into the language rooms. So first, could we have that in Cantonese? 你好,大家好,欢迎你们今天参加这个Alameda,Contracaster的公共交通区,公开听证会的通知。我们今天要来有一个翻译的服务。每一个人都要选择一个的语言,请你选择英文,如果你不需要翻译。但如果你需要西班牙语,国语和广东话的话,你需要来到西班牙语的语言。大家好,欢迎大家参加今晚AC 选择Mandarin国语,进入国语翻译频道。如果你要举手发言的话,你可以选用Zoom的举手功能。你也可以选用Zoom的Q&A功能,打字提问,我们会做出解答。Back to you. Great, thank you. And lastly, the announcement please in Spanish. Eh, buenas tardes. La reunión de hoy va a tener servicio de interpretación simultánea en español. Para poder acceder al canal de interpretación en español, miren ustedes en la parte de abajo de su pantalla de Zoom el icono del globo terráqueo donde dice Interpretation. Allí pueden hacer clic y escoger el idioma de su preferencia, en este caso Spanish o Español. Si ustedes están accediendo a la reunión a través de un teléfono móvil, Van a ver en la parte superior o inferior derecha de la pantalla de Zoom tres puntitos y dice More o Más. Pueden hacer clic allí para encontrar los servicios de interpretación y elegir el idioma español. Gracias. Perfect, thank you. Now, if we can have everyone hop into the language room of their choice, we will go ahead and move on. So on the next slide, we will cover the Zoom features that are enabled this evening. 
And you'll see on your Zoom screen, the Q&A is enabled as well as the raise hand feature. And there are a few portions of the webinar tonight in particular where we're really hoping to hear from you. So at those times in particular, please go ahead and share your feedback via Q&A um, or raise your hand. And at that time, our team will go ahead and um, allow you to speak and ask you to unmute. So um, please keep in mind that those are available and we look forward to hearing from you at those times. And next we'll move on to introductions. So my name is Jen Nentwig. I'm a principal with Tripepi Smith, the outreach and engagement firm helping AC Transit with this important effort. And I'm also happy to be your facilitator here tonight. I'm here with us tonight. We also have Mr. Michael Wagaman from Wagaman Strategies and they are the demography firm working with AC Transit. I'm here with us tonight. I'm also pleased to see Director Peoples from AC Transit. So um, Director, is there anything that you'd like to say by way of additional opening remarks? Sure, I just want to welcome everybody here. And um, I've seen this presentation a couple of times. It's very well done. And I encourage you to ask any questions you have and to participate in, in the meeting. But thank you very much for coming. Great. And I believe that rounds out our introductions this evening. So we'll move on to a brief overview of the schedule. And as you can see, we'll start off with an introduction of the redistricting process and the rules and goals. Next, we'll move into a conversation on neighborhoods and communities of interest. And this is one of those sections of the webinar where we are really hoping to hear from you and take advantage of some of those feedback tools during the webinar. Next, we'll move on to a review of the public mapping and map review tools. And Michael will actually pull some of those up and provide a walkthrough of how those can be used to provide input. And we'll wrap up with a review of next steps. So we'll move on to the next slide that goes over today's goals. So through the redistricting process and events like tonight's workshop, we're going to learn from the experts. That's the first goal. And in this case, it's learning from Michael Wagaman from Wagaman Strategies all about the redistricting process and what goes into it. Um, we realize that this is a pretty complex process that doesn't happen too often. So it is an opportunity to educate and explain to community members what the process is and why it's so important. Then with that first goal um, accomplished, hopefully we will provide an opportunity for experts to listen to you. It's important for the experts to hear from you, members of the community, since you are really the experts on neighborhoods and communities of interest in this service area. And that information on communities of interest and neighborhoods is really what can be so valuable in factoring into the redrawing of ward boundaries. And lastly, we want to go over all the tools and participation mechanisms so that you leave empowered to give effective feedback moving forward from tonight. Um, our goal is that you'll take these tools, you'll talk to friends, family, community members, and really walk away knowing the opportunities and the reasons um, for participating throughout the process moving forward. So we can move on to the next slide. And this slide just gives you a big picture overview of the timeline of the process. So you can see here that there are five hearings outlined for the process. Um, the first hearing was completed already on September 6th, and the next one is coming up on September 13th. So moving right along with the process. And then um, you can see the third public hearing will be October 4th, when the board will have an opportunity to review plans that had been drafted to that point. And then October 25th will be the fourth hearing to further review and revise plans. And then November 8th is currently the target date when a map could be selected. And, an, and I'm sorry, when um, the map selected at the fourth hearing would formally be um, you know, the selection by ordinance. So 
that is a big picture overview of the timeline. And to give you a better sense of the phases of the timeline, I'll now turn it over to Michael. So over to you. Great. Thank you so much. And I'll join in welcoming everyone. And, you know, as was noted, you see the, the timelines for the hearings. Um, there are obviously a series of workshops as well, both before the lines are drawn, which we're doing right now, and then after uh, plans are released. And that process really is designed to work in different phases, and that's on purpose. And uh, before I talk about that, I just want to emphasize, you know, if this feels like a lot happening in a short amount of time, it is. And that's really not necessarily at the, the uh, direction of the AC Transit District. Uh, state law envisions that once you make the decision to kind of change your electoral method, in this case, going from five of the seven board members being elected by wards to seven, all seven of them being it's it wants that process to get done pretty quickly. And so that's what you're seeing in this timeline here and, and why we have that. And state law also envisions kind of bifurcating that process where, you know, everybody always wants to get to the end of the story and what are the lines going to look like? But that's really not the way uh, the process is set up. It's set up so that you start by having a, a series of hearings before lines are drawn. That's the opportunity uh, for the public to really weigh in and really focus on what are the goals? What are we trying to achieve with this process? Because it is a public policy process. And like any public policy, there are trade-offs. And it's important for people to understand when you see a map that you know may not do exactly what you want, it's why those decisions were being made. Um, and that's why we're going through this today is really to get that process going of um, gathering that information. Again, we'll then move it in a future phase where at that October 4th hearing, we will have uh, the draft plans that I put together based on board direction. I want to emphasize it's based on that direction and based on that public input, because this is really your process. I'm just a facilitator, just like Jen is our facilitator for this evening. Uh, but this is really about what's best for uh, the, the AC Transit District and the community it serves. Um, at that October 4th meeting, they the board will have the plans that I put together along with all the public plans. So as we talk tonight about some of the public plans, if you decide to submit one of yours, your own, that'll be available that evening. And to emphasize, we will put treat those exactly the same as anything I draw because the board really deserves uh, a fair look at everybody's feedback in this process. At that fourth hearing, they'll give additional direction and then we'll move into refined plans. And, and as uh, Jen noted, uh, hopefully settling on a plan on that October 25th meeting. And if we advance to the next slide, um, just what is the redistricting process? Fundamentally, again, five of the seven current board members are elected by wards or districts, maybe more commonly known as, and we're moving to uh, all seven being elected by those. And redistricting is simply the act of redrawing those lines that people are elected from. Uh, and it's an important process because how those lines are drawn will affect how people are represented for the rest of the decade. So if we advance... The, you know, there are a lot of reasons why redistricting happens. I'm sure a lot of people saw redistricting going on a lot in uh, 2020, 2021. That's largely driven by the fact that the census released new data and that affected everybody who had district or ward boundaries. And this process is really being driven by the California Voting Rights Act, which again is kind of uh, pushing the uh, jurisdiction towards electing all seven uh, members by ward. But Regardless of the reasons why you redistrict, all three of these are important and all three of these will impact the process, including very critically that public input. This is that opportunity to say what's working, what's not, what can we do better and really provide that feedback. So you're really a critical part of this process. And if we advance to the next slide, you see the current war boundaries here, which are evenly balanced based on population, which is how we draw boundaries here. It's based on population, not registered voters, not eligible voters, not how many pets we have, even though we love them, it is based on people. And you can see they're relatively equally uh, uh, of equal size. The problem that comes up if we move to the next slide is that now we're drawing seven words and two problems emerge. First, we're missing two wards, right? There are two wards that don't exist. We only have five. 
And the other one is that the existing wards are all too big because before we were trying to draw wards of about 315,000 people, and now we're trying to draw wards of 225,000. So I draw the analogy of you imagine if you have uh, a big family gathering, you're trying to make a bunch of meatballs and you find out your uh, in-laws invited two extra people to come over and now you're having to kind of redivide everything so that everybody has something on their plate. And that's kind of what we're doing here uh, to try to, for those who are visual thinkers. Uh, so uh, if we advance to the next slide here, um, here you see, um, even though it's been only two years since the lines were redrawn, we do have new data that's going to influence this process. So the population numbers are still the same, other than for some little tweaks to adjust uh, for incarcerated populations. But one of the things we look at is citizen voting age population. Uh, this is something we look at to make sure we're complying with federal law, particularly the Federal Voting Rights Act. And unlike the census, which is only updated once every decade, this data is actually updated every uh, year. And that's actually important and helpful because it's used in particular to capture uh, cha demographic changes that have happened. And even in two years, we can see how within AC Transit, there have been changes, particularly uh, very uh, rapid growth in the AAPI community in South County, which is what you're seeing here. So for those who are involved in 2021, know that a lot of it is going to be the same, but also know that there are a couple of things that are a little different here, and that's important to understand. Uh, if you see slightly different numbers, it's not a mistake. It's just reflecting that most current data available. And if we move on to the next slide, here you see all that data kind of combined together, both that population data and all that citizen voting age population data with the racial ethnic breakdowns. And you see this is a very diverse jurisdiction that's being served. Everyone, I think, who lives there knows that, knows that this is a, the East Bay is an incredibly diverse portion of the state. And, you know, this is our opportunity to kind of look at those issues, not just race and ethnicity, but all the various diversity that make up the AC Transit District. And if we move on to the next slide, you'll see that there's a series of relevant laws that kind of guide this process all the way from the US Constitution all the way down to many, many, many lawsuits and litigations that have been done over the 200 years of the country. Um, and uh, because redistricting has been a part of our lives since the first 10 years after the country got started. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not going to take everybody's night tonight to go through every single one of those. If you are curious about this, uh, we'll talk about the website that exists. And we did do a fuller presentation to the board at their first hearing. And that information is up there uh, for you to look at if you want to kind of get a better sense of everything that we're going to be involved. But if we advance the next slide, one of the really key concepts that is part of the law is the concept of uh, community of interest. And uh, I'm gonna turn things back over to Jen, who's gonna talk about some of the things that involve uh, looking at those issues. And then I'll come back and rejoin to talk about some of the ways you can get feedback either on communities of interest or if you wanted to submit your own plan. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And I think mentioning the tool up front is really helpful. We'll be sharing the concepts and some questions to keep in mind, but remember there is a tool that we'll be pointing to at the end. So you don't necessarily need to remember each of these questions or notes. Um, the tool that we'll be sharing will really walk you through how to share that feedback. But um, as you're thinking about sharing feedback, these are some of the key concepts to keep in mind. So the first is neighborhoods. And when it comes to defining neighborhoods for redistricting, you can think about these questions here on the slide. So first is what is your neighborhood? And usually there's just a way that you would describe your neighborhood when you're talking to folks who live in your area. And then the second question is what are its geographic boundaries? And sometimes when you're thinking about those boundaries, you'll be able to think of physical features. So some examples here are highways, major roads, rivers, canals, and hills. Sometimes you're describing it in terms of your nearest park or school. And then sometimes it's another neighborhood landmark. Uh, maybe it's the grocery store that's nearby or um, a other community gathering spot. And then the final note on this slide is that in the absence of public testimony, sometimes planning records and other similar documents can be used to pull in those types of 
details. So then we'll move on to the next slide. And this is where we get into the term community of interest. So, and what that means is a group that shares common interests and um, the concept describes bringing like people together for representation. And through redistricting, the goal is to minimize splits of communities of interest. And so that's something that we'll keep in mind using the input from um, AC transit riders on their communities of interest. And then the law generally does not limit the kinds of interests that may bind a community. So that's pretty open-ended in terms of how you can describe your community of interest. Then on to the next slide. We've got some community of interest examples. So similar to neighborhoods in that they can reference assets like schools and shopping areas, housing, culture and language, and employment. And also it can consider existing data such as public transit routes, really applicable to AC transit in particular. And there is no definitive data set. So again, it is pretty open-ended to input from the community to define what those are. So we'll move on to slide 20. And here in a minute, we'll open it up to see if there's any feedback from participants tonight on neighborhoods. So we'll ask what defines your community? And if you're willing to share the geographic area of your neighborhood, plus um, the shared issue or characteristic that would really help tell your community story. And then the second question um, would be, or I'm sorry, this is um, regarding communities of interest. So beyond neighborhoods, I apologize, because it is um, tying the community geographic area with that second question, which does tie back to why the community benefits from being included within a single district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. And I know we've got a lot of words here on this slide, but I really liked what Michael shared during the most recent workshop, which was what, where, why. So essentially, what is your community of interest? Where is it? And why should it be considered a um, community to keep together for purposes of representation? So we'll move on to the next slide. And at this point, we'll pause for any raised hands or Q&A to see if anyone here tonight wants to share about your neighborhood and its boundaries. And this is the first in a two part. So we'll pause here for any feedback on neighborhoods. And that is specifically kind of the area that you live and how you define it. And then our next slide is on communities of interest. So any initial thoughts here from our participants tonight on neighborhoods? Okay, I'm not seeing feedback from the group here tonight, but as a reminder, we will be going over all the participation tools and we welcome feedback at any point through the website and the other contact tools we'll be going over. So we'll move on next to an opportunity to share input on communities of interest on the next slide. So these are all questions that can help drive ideas to share when thinking about your potential community of interest. So you can think through who is a part of your community, what are some meaningful places your community recognizes or gathers at, what are some common concerns you share with a group, what are some common cultural characteristics that unite a community? What are common work-related traits that bring a community together? What is significant about the physical environment? And what areas benefit from staying together in a district? So I'll pause here again and see if any of those questions jog any thoughts from our participants tonight that you'd like to share. Okay, hey, well, I'm not seeing any input or questions on this at this time. I'll note too that we do have a separate Q&A time later on. So if you continue to think these things over and have some more thoughts you'd like to share later on in the webinar, we'll open it up for questions and feedback one more time too. But it looks like at this time, we can go ahead and move on to the next slide.
and I'll turn it back over to Michael for a review of the public mapping and map review tools. Great. And I'll say, and I said at the last workshop, you know, it's okay that folks may not want to chime in tonight or maybe still thinking about it because community of interest really is kind of a tough one in that it's the thing we all kind of know intrinsically. We know what our community is, but it's hard to think about it and really talk about it because, again, as the law says, it is um, really open-ended what you how you can define it. And that's on purpose because how you define your community may not be the same as how your neighbor defines their community, even though you live on the same street how you define your community for purposes of AC transit may not be the same way you define what community is most important to you if you're talking about your city council or your state assembly member because they're doing different things. So it's an important thing to kind of think about. Uh, the important thing though to remember is that even for folks who aren't necessarily interested in redistricting, aren't necessarily really interested in AC transit or even ha and, and how it elects its governing board, it's still something because again, people know what their community is. So for those who are on the workshop, if you do have other folks you're talking to about the process who maybe don't aren't interested in drawing their own plans, this is still a way that they can participate. And we do have a host of different tools uh, that are available to them. If we advance to the next slide, you'll see this is a, a section of the website, but rather than just showing you a section of the website, we'll go ahead and show you the website and some of the stuff that lives there. So uh, if uh, folks want to stop the share, then I will take over here. And it looks like we are sharing successfully. So that is good news. Uh, whoa. Um, so uh, looking at uh, the website that we have available to everybody, there's a lot of information here. So as Jen noted, uh, if you know you don't have to keep every single note from this call because if it if you missing a question a this presentation will be on the website but in addition all the stuff you need will pro if there's a question it's probably somewhere on the website to answer and there's a lot of great resources there as you start thinking about these kind of questions so there's things like baseline maps that would let you see kind of the AC transit in a lot of different ways and see all the things that overlay. Uh, the district, whether it's the population or overlapping cities and counties or overlapping school districts, so overlapping transit routes. So lots of ways to kind of picture the district in different ways. There's the, again, all those demographics you saw earlier that uh, show the existing boundaries. There's an ex interactive map. So if you really wanted to zoom in and see where exactly is that existing boundary and is it where I think it should be, you can zoom in. And then there's the tools for give a public input. And that's where I'm really going to focus my time. And they do kind of fall into two different categories. One is really designed, again, for people who want to give testimony, uh, feedback on communities of interest. And the other is for folks who want to submit their own plans for a ward or for all seven wards. And I want to emphasize that these tools are really designed uh, to work uh, for different audiences because everybody is different, right? So uh, again, some people have mar varying levels of interest. So somebody might be interested in giving their community of interest, but have no interest in submitting a, a plan. Uh, and some folks, you know, we know a digital divide is a really thing. So for some people really like analog papers. Some people really like working online. And so these tools really are designed to make sure everybody can participate the, on the process if they uh, want to. So the first, uh, we're kind of work our way from the least complicated to the most complicated. Kind of the easiest tool is the community of interest uh, paper tool. This is designed to be something you can print out. It's basically just one page you'll return, which is the first page has all the instructions. And then it has a map where you can literally go in and to those three that what, where, and why allows you to define, name your community, draw on the map and then say what makes it a community and why it should be kept together. There's a series of these maps in there. They're all just zooms of different portions of the district. So if one map doesn't have enough detail, you can flip through and find the map that best allows you to draw your community of interest. I want to emphasize you are under no obligation to fill in every single page. Again, it's just find the page that best works for you and get out that pen and pencil and uh, you can draw that. And this is a good tool, particularly if you're not at a computer and you're still trying to engage somebody in the process. 
Uh, the next kind of step up is uh, the online tool for drawing your own community of interest. Uh, what you'll see there is it's just, again, a map of the AC Transit District. And then what you'll see is uh, that you can, you know, for anybody who's used Google before, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, all those things we know and love. And But the difference here is that you have this little paintbrush. And if we clicked on that little paintbrush, you'll see it's starting to highlight some areas in gray. And if you click and hold, you'll see it's going to start filling in. And this is your ability to kind of start drawing your community of interest, as big or small as you think it is and how you would define it. And you can kind of refine that. So if it's too, uh, you're filling in too much area, you can kind of shrink down and color in a smaller area at a time. If you want to go bigger, you can increase the size of your paintbrush and fill in a bunch at the same time. And it's got an eraser. So if you want to kind of go in and you got something you didn't intend to, you can kind of go back in and just kind of slowly draw the shape of what you would define your community of interest. And just like before on the paper tool, that opportunity to give your community a name and describe it. And then you'll be able to save that, that option and be able to uh, share it because um, as I'll show you in a second, all of these then will be posted to the common website. So then everybody can see what people are submitting as testimony. And that'll apply to things that are drawn using all the tools and also the testimony that comes up during these workshops, during the hearings, because again, there's a commitment to a transparent process. For those who want to kind of go beyond drawing their own plan uh, or drawing their own community of interest and really want to draw their own plan, again, there's a series of tools. Uh, the first of which, again, is a paper tool that's designed to be printed out. And you can see there's a series of numbers on that map that describes each of these little kind of colored areas. And on the second page, then is the population for each of those areas. And the idea is you kind of just go through and start figuring out the areas you want to put together and get out your calculator or your pen and paper or your abacus and start adding them up until you get a district uh, of the size you want. Uh, the goal here is to have districts about 225,000 people. It doesn't have to be exactly that size. It has kind of the range on there of a kind of a safe target to where you're trying to get to. Again, you do not need to draw all seven wards if you are submitting a plan with any of these tools. If you only want to draw your ward for the area you live in, that's perfectly fine. If you want to draw all seven, that's perfectly fine. And then it gives instructions for how to submit that plan. For those who kind of want to take a step up from that, uh, there is an Excel tool. Again, it kind of works with those same maps of those same slices of things that uh, pieces you can add together. There's about 150 of those slices in here. And what you can do is you can go in and you start at assigning each of those slices to a word. And if you look right above, you'll start seeing the numbers start magically adding up. And instead of getting out your amicus, Abacus, you can, again, just let Excel do the work for you and then kind of save that and then send this in. Again, always making sure to describe what is your community of interest and why is or what is it that makes your plan the best? Why, why, why did I draw this this way? And finally, the, the last option is the online tool for, uh, for uh, drawing your own plan. Uh, the, the the other tools I showed you previously for drawing your own plans, again, use those slices. There are only about 150 of those. There are actually about 16,000 census blocks that make up AC Transit. It's all these little areas in here. So if you really want to get refined and really you know refine down your proposal, uh, this is the tool for you. Uh, and again, just like before, we have that paint tool, except you notice here, instead of having just the one color, we have uh, seven different colors there. And so that's so because we can draw up to seven words, right? And what you'll see here is you can go in and you can start coloring in just like we were before, filling in, drawing the district or word, excuse me. And you can see when I'm coloring in, this blue line is starting to fill in. And this line here is that kind of magic ideal number. Again, you don't have to be exactly that number. You're just trying to get closer. And you'll see it filling in, filling in, filling in. And there we are. Now we have a theoretical ward. And then if we click to the next color, now we can start drawing our second ward. And you'll see it starting to fill in and so on and so forth. And you can kind of start drawing 
uh, your districts that way. Uh, there's a bunch of other options in here. So things like, for example, if you want to go in and overlay the census place geography, these are cities, you can go that and see like, okay, did I get all of Berkeley and did I put it all in the word I wanted it to? It also has an option to highlight unassigned areas. So you can kind of go back and say like, okay, did I get everything? Is everybody assigned to a ward? Does everybody have a, have a home? Uh, and then there's tools to do things like starting to look at uh, the makeup of each of these districts. So you can kind of see what the, uh, those, that racial and ethnic makeup of each of the things you've drawn. And again, that ability to save and publish your plans because as people are submitting through the district or tool, you'll see that they'll start being published here. And you can see some people have already started submitting their own plans and their own community of interest testimony. And again, those will publish as uh, plans are submitted. I know the tool can be a little daunting, even though it's pretty user-friendly. Uh, they try to make it pretty user-friendly. Uh, again, if you didn't write down every note on this, there is on the website a handy dandy tool uh, to kind of walk you through the instructions of exactly how to draw uh, using the tool and you can kind of remind yourself like, oh yeah, that's how that works. So that's all again on the website there. Uh, if there are questions uh, tonight, um, you know, we can talk about, you know, answer those tonight on how any of the tools work. And then just note um, uh, on the website uh, there and in this presentation, there's all the contact information. So you can send it an email or call or uh, various ways to outreach if you have additional questions. So with that, I will stop talking and hand things back over to uh, Jen. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And something that came up during the last workshop that we took to heart and made an update on was on the website itself, we've updated verbiage together with AC Transit to make it a little bit more clear that you can participate in any of those ways. So you can do all of the above or whichever seems like the best way for you. Um, so you can provide input on your communities of interest. You can draw a partial or complete map using those tools Michael demonstrated. Um, and or you can submit comments by either sharing your thoughts at a hearing um, workshop or via email or phone with the contact info we'll share. So as we shared last time, it's really a choose your own adventure and how you'd like to participate and provide your feedback. Um. And with that, we'll open it up for any questions. I think I saw a raised hand that went down. So I'm not sure if we answered the question or if the person needs to raise their hand again, if they'd like. Any questions from our participants here tonight? Oh, and we've got some in the Q&A chat. Thank you, Michael, for pointing that out. All right. So our first question here, you can... Um, probably address Michael, the question is on elections and when they're scheduled to take place. And then um, what that implication might have in terms of the election and potentially on bus routes, which I'm not sure um, that that is within our scope to answer here tonight, but I'll turn that over to you. Sure. So the AC uh, transit directors are elected in the general election of even numbered years. So uh, that means that the next regular election for these positions will be in November of 2024. And that's unchanged by this process. That's when these elections have, have historically occurred and would continue to occur. So all we're doing is changing you know, the, how those people are being elected and skin, instead of people being elected by five by wards and two at large, they're all going to be elected by wards going forward. And so that regular election again will happen in November of uh, 2024. Uh, there's a question about what the turnout is going to be. Obviously, this is going into uh, a presidential election, which is usually a higher turnout election. And these elections are consolidated in the general elections. Uh, so that's, an, you know, when we generally see our highest turnout. So as many people as possible have that opportunity to weigh in on the governance of the board. The way that these wards are drawn do not directly impact bus routes. So or anything like that, or any other service provided. So it's not like this, if this word is drawn this way, my bus route's going to disappear. That's not the way this works. What this is doing here is determining how the people who are going to make those decisions are elected. So this is about choosing those folks and that's why it matters. So again, if you see a, line, uh, a plan or a, um, 
we're not really talking, this isn't a service plan. There's a whole separate discussion that the AC Transit Board does about, uh, uh, I forget the term that they use for it, for you know restructuring those route lines, but that's not what this is. This is really just purely uh, about elections. Yep, thank you, Michael. And I do see a raised hand now from Natalie. So I will allow you to talk, Natalie, and you should be able to unmute. Hello, my name is Natalie Maxwell. I work for the Center for Independent Living as the transportation specialist. And I'm just wondering what, um, so your online tools are not uh, screen reader adaptable or friendly. And so I'm wondering what tools would be suggested for blind and low vision um, folks who want to provide feedback. Well, I can jump in with at least one option that I know is available, and then I'll see if Michael has more. I think for additional accommodations, what the um, what one recommendation could be would be to reach out via phone and make that request. So the phone number for those types of requests is 510-891-7192, and it would involve pressing one for English, pressing two for Spanish, and pressing three for Chinese. So I think that's one option that has that information posted to the website so folks can have that contact information. Is there anything else in addition to that that comes to mind for you, Michael? Well, yeah, and I just want to add that, you know, there are also the options of for folks who do have those screen readers and 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 those options, uh, you know, they are also accepting testimony uh, through uh, email as well. So all those various options that you would normally engage with are a part of that, just not what we showed this evening. And so whether it's in these workshops or in the hearings, those both those uh, phone-in options and those, uh, those written options are available. And so if you don't want to use any of those tools that we've shown here tonight and you just want to say, this is my community, send an email or call in and say, like, this is my community. Again, answering those three questions. What is it? Where is it? And what makes it a community? And that doesn't really require drawing. I know it is one of the challenges, unfortunately, the redistricting process, because it is, uh, you know, involving topography and geography. It, it It is a challenge there. But, you know, people can say that my neighborhood starts at X Street, runs up to the freeway, and then runs down this way. And actually, that's something we do at the end of this process is we write what are called meets and bounds. For those who don't know what those are, that's a verbal description of the final district boundaries. And that's required by law for us to do that, that we will write out a, a verbal description of each of these words. So that will be available at the end of the process as well. So those are those um, uh, options available that, you know, uh, that uh, help folks who, uh, who may have those issues. Thank you for your suggestions. I, yeah, I would just love to see those options stated a little more clearly because of course folks who want to utilize screen readers have to go through a lot of information and images on the website pages to then be able to identify where their options are. And so even including in, in this presentation, I would love some, some more explicit notes on accessibility just as a suggestion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And, and I'll add thank you for that suggestion. As, as Jen noted earlier, you know, we took feedback from the last hearing and applied it, or from the last workshop, apply it to this one. And and I know uh, the folks at Trepevi Smith and at AC Transit are committed to taking that feedback and, and trying to get better every meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, thank you. All right. I believe those are all of our questions and raised hands. So with that, we'll go ahead and move right along to the next slide. And that brings us to a schedule of upcoming workshops. So here we are this evening on September 11th doing the virtual workshop today. And then the next workshop coming up will be in person actually at the AC Transit Boardroom. Um, on the second floor there in Oakland, and that will be Thursday, September 14th at 6.30. So we hope to see many of you there. And then after that, the next in-person workshop in this phase will be September 30th. Um, that's a Saturday at 2 p.m. And it will be 
in the Fremont area. So at the Fremont Family Resource Center in the Pacific Room there in Fremont. And those are all the workshops that will really round out that first phase that Michael addressed in the slide that showed the phases. So then we'll move on to the next slide. And in this second round of workshops, the focus is a little bit different. So these workshops will be after proposed plans are shared with the board. And at these workshops, the proposed plans will be available and they represent an opportunity for community members to provide feedback and ask questions about those proposed plans. And so you see there will be two workshops held virtually via Zoom. The first in that round being Monday, October 12th at 6.30 and then the second in that round being Tuesday, October 17th at 6.30 as well. So those are upcoming workshops in the process. And we can move on to the next slide, which is actually our final slide of, slide of this evening. So we want to wrap up tonight by emphasizing how community members can continue engaging in the process. Um, you can visit the website, actransit.org slash redistricting. I know we've referenced it a lot this evening because it really is your one-stop shop for all the resources you'll need for the redistricting process. There you'll find additional information, the mapping tools that Michael shared, materials related to the hearings and workshops, um, including the materials and recordings for events like tonight. You can also email AC Transit at any time by emailing myvoice at actransit.org, or you can call the district at 510-891-7192. So before I say farewell, I just want to thank again, Michael, for sharing your expertise and guiding everyone through the tools. Is there anything else you'd like to share as we wrap up? Thank you, everyone. All right. And on behalf of AC Transit, we want to thank everyone again for joining to learn more and to share your input. We hope to continue seeing and hearing from you as this process moves forward. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of your evening.